The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts, no sack for the journey or a second tunic or sandals or walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it and stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. Whoever will not receive you or listen to your words, go outside that house or town and shake the dust from your feet. Amen, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, dear friends, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning. Allow me to first give a, an overall view, perspective for our readings, especially, uh, well, during this week, yesterday already we started with the call of the apostles, the 12 apostles. You will be listening during this week to Jesus giving instruction to the apostles and therefore to all of us of what it means to become a disciple, an apostle. So, instructions, missionary discourse of Jesus Christ, as it is called in the Gospel of Matthew. But allow me to talk more about Saint Benedict today because it is his feast day. And Saint Benedict lived at a time very much similar to ours. In those days, you know, the Christianity had just been officially recognized, almost like a state religion, you would say. And so everybody was becoming a Christian. The time of the persecution of the Christians was over, and now it was uso. It was very easy. It was, well, kaugalian lang, tradition lang dapat lang, became so culturally uh, acceptable, but at the same time, as it became popular, people began to not to take the Christianity and the values of the gospel seriously. So it became diluted, and uh, the, uh, so many were nominal Christians, as we would call them. They were baptized, they were called Christians, but they did not live a truly Christian life. So when Benedict saw that, he decided to move out to establish what we now call the monastic tradition. And it was a spirituality that was particularly directed as a guide for lay people like you. So at the very beginning, he conceived of giving a rule or a proposing a way of living the Christian life for busy people like lay people like you. And it was, he had a very simple formula, ora et labora, you pray and work. In other words, the advice of Saint Benedict to us busy Christians in modern times with so many temptations in the world, if we maintain two principles that we learn how to pray, have a schedule for prayer on top of your work. Ang nagiging problema kasi kung 
Puros ka, labora, labora, labora. Wala ka ng time for God. Cannot be. Okay. But of course, if you're in the world, hindi naman lagi kang nandun lang nagdadasal. Then, paano na yung buhay mo? Paano na yung pamilya mo? Ah, so you have to balance, he said. Prayer and work. Yung pagkahanap buhay para sa mundo at yung pag pagkahanap ng tunay na buhay which is our spiritual life to balance our love for God and our responsibility in the world. So yun ang kanyang principle of ora et labora. But perhaps I would like to concretize the Benedictine tradition, I would like to call it, in terms of our spiritual growth. They're in three-letter H. H, the first H being holiness, the desire to be holy. And we in the Philippines have such a great advantage on this level because, Aba, ang grabe kaya ang ating devotion na no. We are a people amante de Maria. We are a people who love our devotions, our processions, our novenas, our, our life of prayer. And that's already a very clear advantage to us. The desire to be holy. The desire to pray. Kaya nga dito, Father Jason, ang hangang-hanga ako at napakarami kang mga devotees. Not only present, but even online. Okay. Magandang way of proclaiming our call to holiness. The second age in the Benedictine spirituality is of course Saint Benedict always advised humility as the foundation of the spiritual and Christian life. Kailangan maging humble tayo. They always nagkakaroon ng gulo, conflict in any community, the church included, when nakakalimutan natin to be humble. So humility in fact, in the rule of St. Benedict, it was the obligation of the abbot to be the first to humble, to be humble. In fact, to wash the feet of visitors. That was the role of the abbot, of the leader of the community, was the very first one to do humble service, humility. So in our relationships also, we should not be seeking power and authority, but instead seeking, how can I serve? Paano kaya ako makakapagsilbi sa aking kapwa? So when that is the perspective, the virtue that we look for, humility, about your own the Lord becoming pleasing not only to God, but even ultimately pleasing to your co-workers to your kasama sa bahay o sa opisina because hindi ka mayabang, hindi ka mapagmalaki, but instead you are humble. That's the second edge. And the third, which I like very much and which Father Jason you have here very much also, the third edge is hospitality. Okay? You will know that a person really is marunong magdasal at a person is really humble kung siya din ay marunong maging hospitable maawain at mag, mag, to be hospitable and we Filipinos are also again noted for our hospitality we tuloy po kayo we say there is a visita who comes in uh, kumakain ka kahit tuyo lang yung pagkain mo sabi Oh, tuloy po kayo, kain tayo. I mean, di naman siya invited sana, no? Pero dumaan siya, eh di, oh, tuloy ka, kakain ka. Kain po tayo. Yan, of course, tayo naman na Pilipino. Eh, sige na po, kumain na po ako. Kahit gutom na gutom, no? <laughs> Pero hospitality is the mark of the Benedictine monk, the, the Benedictine spirituality. To be able to always see that when there is a person who comes to your door, it is not only a person who is coming to your door, it is Jesus Christ himself. Okay. So when we have that perspective, Aba, when you always, when we people, and people are sent to you, say, padala ito ni Lord, at baka si Lord nga ito mismo na naghingi sa akin ng tulong o gustong makisama sa akin. 
So hospitality. So St. Benedict preached, please teach us to desire holiness of life. St. Benedict, teach us to be humble in all things. And St. Benedict, teach us to be hospitable, to recognize Jesus Christ in every person we meet. Amen. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal life, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that attentive to the teaching of St. Benedict, we may faithfully serve your designs and love one another with fervent charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before I give, before I give the final blessing, I would just like to add, add a kind of I, you know, I like to have my assignments. Okay. St. Benedict is also noted as a very strong enemy of the devil. Please be seated for a while. <laughs> in, the, in the gospel proclaimed just this morning, the mission Jesus gave to his apostles, preach the gospel, heal the sick, expel demons. And Benedict comes in particularly in the third in instruction, expel demons, defend, uh, drive away the devil. Kaya sino po dito ang may St. Benedict Medal? Meron po ko nakita doon. Ah, yeah, very good. So, my, I remember my father used to tell me, the tatlo yung kinakatakutan ng satanas. Aside of course from the Holy Cross. Una sabi niya, kinakatakutan niya si Mama Mary. So the devil is afraid of Mary. So kung meron kang scapular or miraculous medal, uy, meron kang ano, you are protected by the Blessed Mother. The second na kinakatakutan ni devil is Saint Michael the Archangel. Ah, because talo siya. And the third, my father used to tell me, is Saint Benedict. Ayan. So it's a standard. Siguro sa bahay ninyo meron din kayong Saint Benedict sa door. Oh, very good. They are very holy, your parishioners, Father Jason. So, when you bless a house, pag may groundbreaking kayo, you put Saint Benedict to drive away the evil. So in your room, you have a Saint Benedict. And most especially, you have the Saint, Bened Saint Benedict medal with you. So may mga magagandang binebenta ngayon na mga Saint Benedict. Meron ka din. Ano? Ayan, ako. So, Saint Benedict, please help us that we may fight the devil by turning to you, to the Blessed Mother, and to Saint Michael. Yeah, so before we let Bishop go, we would like to thank him. We thank Bishop Rene, the friend of our parish. Palakpakan natin si Bishop. As I've said, he was supposed to say mass for us for the fiesta. Kaya lang nandun sila busy sa uh, meeting. But Bishop, thank you for visiting once again, especially on this day of St. Benedict. Tama po yun. Uh, ako, ginawa ko na assignment ko. May Benedictine medal na ako. Kayo, ah, nasa na? Yeah. Magandang ano nga, devotion natin ito, no? Mga parishioner St. Benedict. And uh, totoo yun, uh, in, inscribed in the Benedictine medal, uh, in Latin is the words, Begun Satan begun. So, nandito yon sa uh, medal na ito. So, we ask Benedict, Saint Benedict to protect our families and our homes. Bishop, thank you once again. Uh, after the Mass, we will have our healing prayer through the relic of Saint uh, Maria Goretti and Saint Isikel. We have also Sister Flora, our partner in the healing ministry. She will be, she will join us in our prayers and intercessions after the Mass. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass has been offered. Thanks be to God. <laughs>